but there's lots more news ahead. I'll be joining John Pruitt up next with these stories. I'm Jerry Carnes in Thompson, where some residents say there are still too many unanswered questions about the shooting of Clifford Bowtree. I'm Jill Becker in Bankhead Courts, where residents have come up with a list of demands for City of Atlanta officials. I'll have that story coming up. I'm Bruce Arian at Checker Cab Headquarters, and if you're planning on having too much fun this New Year's Eve, these folks will be happy to give you a free ride home. I'm Mary Ann Bergerson. He sold his multi-million dollar business and underwent a life-saving operation. In tonight's News Extra, a look back at 88 with Dillard Mumford. John Pruitt, Kelly Morgan, Joe Washington with sports, and Johnny Beckman's weather. This is 11 Alive News at 6. Good evening, I'm John Pruitt. And I'm Tom Sinkovitz in for Kelly Morgan. City leaders are preparing to hold another all-night vigil in Bankhead Courts. Donna Lowry is at the Bankhead Courts now. And Donna, exactly what do they hope to accomplish by this vigil? Well, they hope to show some support for the residents. And they say they want to let the drug dealers know that they're not going to continue to let them run this place. They have set up a tent and they've already begun singing here. They say they'll sing, they'll have speeches, and then they'll also... Um, have prayers every hour on the hour and they will stay here all night no matter what happens and of course this is the second time they've tried this they came out here last friday night and pitched a tent but they were run out by the sound of gu sound of gunfire they hope that don't, doesn't happen tonight they say nothing is going to make them leave meanwhile some of the residents here say that they've had enough and they want the city to take some type of action They've come up with a list of demands, and they've come up with an ultimatum. Jill Becker reports on that. Tired of what they label lip service from the city, residents of Bankhead Court say they have their own plan of action to cut down on crime in the drug-infested neighborhood. The residents' list of demands for the city includes a separate police force to patrol city housing projects. The Atlanta Housing Authority fill all vacant apartments within 72 hours of vacancy to prevent drug dealers from moving in and using the apartments, and a curfew for all children under 16 years old. In recent years, Bankhead Courts has been a haven for drug dealers and drug-related violence. Mail service was temporarily suspended when a postal worker said shots were fired while he was making his rounds. And a MARTA driver said when he opened the door of his bus recently, someone pointed a gun at him. But not all residents of Bankhead Courts think a list of demands will stop the crime. They listen, but they ain't nothing going to be dealt about. You know, they ain't nothing going to be dealt about. I feel the frustration because they live here in this community and they, you know, they've heard the elected officials come out and talk about things, nothing happened, and that they just figure that as soon as this is quiet down that they're not going to do anything because usually we don't hear from our elected officials until election time. Residents of Bankhead Courts have given City of Atlanta officials one month to respond to their list of demands, and if the list isn't met in that month, residents say they'll move on to Plan B. No word yet on what Plan B is, but in the past, residents have staged rent strikes to force changes in their community. In Bankhead Courts, Jill Becker, 11 Alive News. Back here live at Bankhead Courts, where the mayor has just arrived. Fulton County Commission Chairman Michael Lomax is here, and there are other city leaders. They say they'll be here all night. We'll be here and have a report at 11 o'clock. Tom and John. Thank you, Doug. Residents in Thompson still are asking questions tonight about the shooting death this week of escapee Clifford Bowtree, the man accused of gunning down a GBI agent last August. Bowtree was buried today, and Jerry Carnes is back from Thompson tonight in our Athens newsroom. Jerry, uh, are these uh, concerned residents getting any answers to the questions they're raising? Well, John, this morning, McDuffie County Sheriff's deputies and GBI agents met with some Thompson residents to try to clear up some of the confusion in this case. There are still many who believe we haven't heard the whole story. Police say Bowtree apparently stayed quite busy during the month after his escape from the McDuffie County Jail. Authorities have linked him to an auto theft and six December burglaries, including a break-in at the office of District Attorney Dennis Sanders. Taken from here were items like a radio, a phone directory, and a book of matches. I guess that's open for speculation, but perhaps he just wanted some, some souvenirs from the person who was going to prosecute him. After his escape, Bowtree apparently stayed in Thompson, spending much of his time in this downtown area, only two blocks from the jail. He was shot down in this parking lot Monday night. According to the GBI, officers surrounded Bowtree, and when he turned on them with this shotgun, Thompson policeman John Holloman fired at him with a shotgun of his own. 
But some residents here believe there is more to the story. There's something wrong. You know, he... I think that there was a, there's a big cover-up. I really do. I think it was a thing that they really want to do. I think if they want to take him alive, they could have tucked him alive. That's really how I feel about it. Mayor Robert Knox believes the shooting was justified and says that's all there is. For anybody to imply that there's some huge cover-up or some sinister plot, uh, I think just, just uh, does not take into account all the facts. Now, late this afternoon, Atlanta City Councilman Hosea Williams met with the Bountry family. Uh, word is he is advising them and that the family may ask for further investigation in this case. John, Tom. All right, Jerry. Thank you. The Georgia Baptist Hospital is being criticized for not making it easier for employees to testify in a drug trial. Fifteen employees have been subpoenaed as witnesses in the federal trial of Eugene Skipwith, the hospital's former assistant pharmacy director. But Georgia Baptist says those employees must testify on their own time, using leave time if necessary. U.S. Attorney Bob Barr has asked Georgia Baptist to change that policy. Individuals ...their own personal leave time. We believe that that is a violation of the spirit of the Victim Witness Protection Act and have accordingly written to the director of Georgia Baptist Hospital asking respectfully that they reconsider their decision and, as most employers do, uh, work with the, the employees and the federal government to ensure that people that appear on behalf of the government and behalf of the people as witnesses are not penalized. A hospital spokesman defends the policy, saying the burden of civic duty must be shared by employer and employee alike. Georgia football coach Vince Dooley may already be lining up a campaign staff for a political run in 1990. Dooley announced his resignation as head football coach earlier this month amid rumors he would make a run for governor in two years. Dooley reportedly met last week with veteran political consultant Delos Walker in Tennessee about a possible campaign. Walker ran the last two campaigns of Governor Joe Frank Harris as well as those of Arkansas Governor Dale Bumpers and Tennessee Senator Al Gore. For Atlanta's convenience store giant, 1988 was the year of his Goliath fight for life. Straight ahead on 11 Alive News, a look back with Dillard Munford and the miracle of his piggyback heart. But first, some cabbies with heart will help keep roads free of drunk drivers. Nobody outsells Ford in Atlanta. And if you're ready to buy a new car this week, think Ford first. First in year-end deals on every Ford in stock with up to $1,000 cash back on selected Fords. Now with no payments until April at participating Ford dealers for qualified buyers. Offer ends January 2nd, so think Ford first. And save $1,200 on Ford Taurus. For a limited time, save over $1,200 on Ford Escort. Think Ford first and save. Now on every Ford in stock. See one of your Metro Atlanta Ford dealers by January 2nd for the best selection. Sale at J.C. Penney this Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Take an extra 30% off every item with a red tag at all Atlanta area J.C. Penney stores. This body's impossible. These size 12s definitely need deodorant soap protection. This dry face doesn't. My underarms need deodorant soap, but this alligator skin's too dry. Breakthrough. It's new, Safeguard DS helps protect you from dry skin by locking in your skin's natural moisture. And it fights body odor. Unbeatable deodorant soap protection in a dry skin bar. It sounds impossible, but it works. Join thousands of treasure hunters at Georgia's oldest and largest antique event. The 41st annual world-famous D.S. Clark Atlanta Antique Show and Sale is in the World Congress Center December 30th through January 1st. It's bigger and better with 500 national and international exhibitors. Over $60 million of rare investment quality antiques from around the world. All exhibits are for sale, so don't miss the big one. The world-famous D.S. Clark Atlanta Antique Show and Sale at the World Congress Center December 30th through January 1st. As you make your plans for New Year's Eve, there's one item you will not want to leave out. And that, of course, is the designated driver. As Bruce Arian tells us tonight, the DUI task force will be working overtime on Saturday night. Bruce? Yeah, Tom, you know, uh, this year, as in years past, there's uh, going to be some options for folks. New Year's Eve, tragically, uh, ends up in auto accidents for a lot of folks. But as I say, this year, there are some options. This guy, right? 101, Atlanta. Okay. You can expect to see a lot of this on Georgia's highways this weekend. Every available trooper and policeman will be pressed into service to try to keep the DUI death toll down. 
and it's a formidable task. Traditionally, alcohol-related fatalities over New Year's Eve increased 64 percent. Public awareness of the dangers of drunk driving has steadily worked toward lowering the number of fatalities, but the battle is far from being won. And that's why you might spot a red ribbon like this one during the weekend. Mothers Against Drunk Driving and the State Patrol are encouraging the displaying of the ribbons, a reminder not to drink and drive. 44 Maria, 1330 North Sand. 112, 13, Corona 17. Here's another potential lifesaver. A lot of cab companies like Checker are offering you a free ride. If he's had too much to drink, then we're going to send him a car. And this is more or less to, to save people's lives, keep them off the streets from being out there drinking and driving. In addition, 22 tow truck companies across the state are offering a free ride home for both you and your car. I donate my trucks and equipment and everything, and my drivers donate their time. Uh, they, uh, there's no charge at all for any of the uh, towing procedures or anything. My drivers are more than uh, anxious to help people out of this situation because we see the real bad part of the accidents that happen out there, the, the end results that the people do get out and try to get home when they really shouldn't be on the road. That one picture right there, perhaps enough reason in itself not to drink and drive. Let's hope everybody, if they need to, will take advantage of... Uh, these opportunities and hope everyone has a very safe uh, New Year's Eve. Tom, and, John. An appropriate toast, Bruce. Yeah. Thank you very much. Salesman, civic leader, outspoken conservative. That is how many know Dillard Munford, the founder of Magic Markets. He's added medical pioneer to that resume. This year, besides selling his multi-million dollar business, Munford's recovering from a heart transplant. In our news extra, Marianne Bergerson looks back at 88 with Munford, a year of survival. The new heart's up here. And the old heart's down here. Doctors tell Dillard Mumford he has a 60-year-old body in a 70-year-old frame. I have a little trouble believing this, but they say that I'll be playing tennis in about three months. Isn't that unbelievable? It's a new field for Emory doctors who perform the transplant. Mumford is one of only two 70-year-olds nationwide living with a heart piggyback. He's home, dressed in his holiday best, after 51 days in the hospital this fall. Oh, yeah, I'm taking some exercise, but I'm weak as a kitten. Aside from his medical miracle, Mumford's had quite a business year. 42 years after the first magic market opened, he sold the business for close to $67 million. The Mumford empire stretches to more than 550 convenience stores and 140 world bazaars. Every company has to have a leader. Anything has to have a leader. And, uh... When the leader's not feeling good and lost a little of his entrepreneurial spirit, I haven't lost much of it, but lost some. Then it's time to, to do something for the stockholders. He's a man with heart and I, I can't... They may be poles apart politically, yet for three years, Mumford and Hosea Williams teamed up to sponsor the Feed the Hungry Thanksgiving dinners. Often, their relationship, though, is strained. Some great philosopher said, uh, we wave, but we don't speak. He's played tennis with George Bush, hunted with Jimmy Carter. It's politics and Atlanta's future that Mumford likes to have a say-so in. He's supporting Maynard Jackson in the next mayoral election. I think those barracudas down there on that city council will just eat Michael Lomax alive. From his buckhead home, Mumford celebrates this holiday, a tree smothered with hearts in one room. A doormat as well reads, all hearts come home for Christmas. 1988 has been very kind to Dillard Mumford. You know, I've had a real full life. I can hardly think of anything that I haven't done that I wanted to do, really. So, this is literally a bonus. Marianne Bergerson, 11 Alive News. Well, 1988 is winding down, and what a year it's been. A bit later on, 11 Alive News, flashes of the best days and the worst days and the people who made those memories. This is Art Eckman of Jacksonville, Florida. In sports tonight, the Spartans speak out. You might not like the weather this weekend, but it's just what the drought doctor ordered, and I'll tell you about it in just a minute. Where can you see and drive the exciting all-new 1989 Mercury Cougar right now? Where else? And where can you get great year-end deals on everything from Tracer to Town Car, but this week only? 
Where else? And where can you save $1,300 on Mercury Sable? Or $1,600 on Mercury Topaz with option package savings and cash back? Or get $750 cash back on Mercury Tracer? Where else but at your Lincoln Mercury dealer? New Year's Eve, famous throughout history for festive events. But none like Circuit City's New Year's Eve sale. Saturday only, 10 to 6 only. Celebrate with savings on this VCR with remote, just $188.97. Saturday only, this Zenith 19-inch cable-ready TV with remote, only $247.97. Saturday only, 10 to 6 only. Circuit City's New Year's Eve sale. Don't miss it. Watch out, Atlanta. Three, two, one. Haverty's burst into 89 with Haverty's spectacular New Year's half-price furniture sale. Starting tomorrow, you'll find hundreds of pieces of name-brand home furnishings at half-price. Shop the new 89 selection of living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms. Get great savings store-wide. Half-price savings during Haverty's New Year's half-price sale starting tomorrow. Haverty's is bursting with half-price savings. Don't you miss it. Here's alert. This may be the most amazing automotive offer ever made. Buy one Honda, take home two. Yes, through Saturday night at Cherry Paul Honda. Buy any new Honda, get a Honda lawnmower. But that's not all. It's the end of the year, and we must clear out 75 Hondas by December 31st. Look, a four-door Honda, just $181 a month. Yes, a four-door Honda, under $200 a month. Plus, take home a self-propelled Honda lawnmower. Prelude. Accord. Civic. 75 Hondas must be sold, and you take home a Honda lawnmower. But hurry, this exclusive offer is Saturday night, only at Cherry Paul Honda. It's been a very dry year, but apparently it's going to have a wet ending to it. Yes, indeed. It's going to be a near-perfect weekend because it's going to rain most of the weekend, and that's what we need so badly. I, I'm kind of glad to see the week this uh, year end, though, and start a fresh year because it means that we can forget our previous mistakes. That's right. <laughs> Watch the sleep. That's clean. right. Weather people always like to forget their previous mistakes and just forge ahead. And that's what we'll do tonight. We got overcast conditions out there right now. Just some little little drizzle, just light drizzle occurring around Atlanta right now. But we will have periods of rain off and on through the weekend, I believe. Temperature is just not budged today. It's 44 degrees right now uh, out at the airport. 43 degrees here in the Midtown area. The relative humidity is 93 percent. The barometer is steady at 30.13. Got an easterly wind right now at five miles an hour. They've had just 15 hundredths of an inch of rain out at the airport. We've had 34 hundredths of an inch here at 11 Alive. And we're below normal in rain for the year by three and a half inches. The uh, high temperature was 45, which was lower than the normal high. And our low temperature was 39, which is higher than the normal low. So that gives us an average for today that was 42 degrees, which is exactly normal <laughs> for today. And I hope you made notes because we're going to have a quiz on this just a little later. Skywatch Doppler radar shows just light rainfall around Atlanta. Pretty good coverage of light rain across the northern part of the state. These elements have been moving toward the northeast at about 30 to 35 miles an hour. And there's some more rain back to the west of us. And all this stuff will continue to move through the area off and on during the weekend. And this is where we need the rain so badly, folks, right up here in north central and northeastern Georgia, where it can drain into those lakes that we'll be depending on next summer so much. Take a look at the temperatures now around the southeast at 5 o'clock. Cool back here in the Carolinas, 40 degrees at Charlotte and Raleigh, 37 at Asheville, 38 at Knoxville, 43 here in Atlanta. There's a warm front down here along the Gulf Coast, 70 degrees down at Mobile. And I think that front's going to work its way back up over the area tomorrow. So in spite of the cloudiness, it should be a little warmer tomorrow than it was today. We've got a flow at the upper levels coming in from the southwest and at the lower levels coming in from the east and southeast. They've been converging right over north Georgia, and that has given us this area of light rainfall right across the northern part of the state during the afternoon. There's a storm system beginning to show some development back here in the western Gulf, and because of that, the heavier rainfall is over here in the lower Mississippi Valley, while we have just light rainfall occurring over the northern part of our state. But I think that storm system will track across the southeast during the weekend. It's going to give us a pretty good chance for some rainfall off and on. We have cold weather right up here in the northern plains, five degrees in International Falls. The only warm spot is down here in Brownsville, Texas, where it's 79 degrees. Here's the storm system that'll be tracking across the southeast during the weekend and giving us periods of rain. Forecast for Atlanta and vicinity for the rest of tonight, rainy and cool, 41 degrees for low for tomorrow. Another rainy and cool day, high temperature about 55 degrees on Sunday. Not only have rain, we may have some thunder showers on Sunday with a high of 56, mostly cloudy on Monday, and a chance of some more rain on Tuesday. Hope you all have a safe and happy new year. Thanks, Johnny. You bet.
All right, let's move on to sports now. Two days away until the Bulldogs play their last game under Vince Dooley. Yeah, least. the first of many bowl games. Let's get it on with the bowl games, huh? Bowl Same. time is approaching for the Georgia Bulldogs, but as they prepare for Sunday's Gator Bowl meeting with Michigan State in Jacksonville, rumors continue to circulate about a replacement for Vince Dooley. Art Ekman is live from Jacksonville. Art, there are reports the players have been campaigning for defensive coordinator Dale Strom as their new head coach. Any truth to that? Well, we talked to a half a dozen of the players this afternoon, and they not only have not seen a petition, uh, they have not signed one, of course, if they haven't seen it. So I think it makes for good conversation anyway in this low period of the Gator Bowl. I do think that Dale Strom will be the next head football coach at the University of Georgia. I think this because I have no factual evidence of this fact, but I think this because the names that have come up nationwide either aren't available or don't have the position or stature that Strom does have, and Dooley wanted to keep that staff intact. And he pressed for that particular item. But on to Michigan State now. They come to the Gator Bowl 6-4 and 1, which is an amazing accomplishment. Coming into the season with high expectations and going 0-4 and 1 in your first five games would have ripped most teams apart, but not the Spartans. Let's start with the nation's top offensive lineman. It turns a lot of people's heads. You're not supposed to be this big and this fast and uh, you know, and still have the athletic ability to play football. Um, and then still be outspoken outspoken might be an understatement but he has helped little Blake Ezor to over 1300 yards rushing I think he likes running behind Tony him and Tony hang around a lot together Tony treats him like his little brother and everywhere you see uh, uh, socially everywhere you see Tony you see Blake and I, I think that shows one thing Blake's pretty smart Ezor is not the only thankful back knowing that he's on my left side you know right handed quarterback um, this is a lot of security. You know, he's, you don't have to worry about your backside. So Tony's a very great asset to our team. The Spartans defense is especially great against the rushing game. They are sixth in scoring defense nationally. They've got a weak side linebacker who leads the nation in interceptions. I knew I was going to get some interceptions because, uh, you know, I, I got pretty long arms and stuff like that. And it, it's kind of, I think it's a challenge for a quarterback to throw it over me. And then, Tom Singovitz asked me who the favorite would be or who I would like to see uh, win this game. I'd like to see the Bulldogs win it, but I think Michigan State will. Bill Goldberg out of the center of that defense just plays right into Michigan State's rushing hands. I was going to say, I was going to say, Art, the Georgia defensive line's got a heck of a job ahead of it. Thanks for that report yeah. from Jacksonville. Well, it will be Georgia and LaSalle in tonight's championship game of the Cotton States Classic. South Carolina and Princeton will meet in the early consolation game. Last night, Princeton gave Georgia a scare. Chris Marquardt led all scores with 16 as Hugh Durham's dogs, led by Alec Kessler, held on for a 58-54 win. Afterward, Durham, he preys on Pete Carrillo, the Princeton coach. He's a really, really good basketball coach. His team's, oh, here he comes. <laughs> That's what I promise. He's really, really, really a good. Keep it going, coach. That's right. Nicest guy he's ever met. <laughs> Tech lost to Illinois, by the way, last night, 80 to 75. Right. Peach Bowl tomorrow. Yeah. John's a really, really great anchor. Right here. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Still to come on 11 Alive News highlights from a year of triumph and tragedy. 1988 will be remembered in part as the year some enemies embraced and nature raged. We'll take a look back after this. outsells Ford in the Southland. And if you're ready to buy a new car this week, think Ford first. First in year-end deals on every Ford in stock with up to $1,000 cash back on selected Fords. Now with no payments until April at participating Ford dealers for qualified buyers. Offer ends January 2nd, so think Ford first. And save $1,200 on Ford Taurus. For a limited time, save over $1,200 on Ford Escort. Think Ford first and save. Now on every Ford in stock. Hurry, see one of your 185 Southland Ford dealers today. The labor force has been busting its butt all year long. But now there's relief. The road's New Year's half-off sale. You'll save 20, 30, even 50% on sofas, bedroom and dining room sets, and other furnishings. So hightail it to Rhodes New Year's half-off sale now, or you'll be leaving our incredible savings behind. Food manufacturers often lower their price for a month or so to get supermarkets to buy more, kind of like a sale. Now, Cub Foods uses these lower costs to lower prices. These green stickers mean Cub is passing the savings right back to you. 
Start your holiday festivities off with large, headless, farm-raised fresh shrimp. Sale priced just 10 cents each. At Cub Foods, it's a new way to run a supermarket. When people get a taste of this legend, wow. they're never at a loss for words. Steak and Ale, for over 20 years, the legend in steak. It's the biggest annual sale in truck history. It's your Atlanta area GMC truck dealer's year-end bash. This week, buy any new GMC truck. Make no payment till March. Get cash back up to $600 for total factory savings of up to $2,400. Plus big year-end dealer discounts during the biggest annual sale in truck history. The year-end bash this week only at Walker, Carrollton, Tennessee, Forest Park, McGibbony, Conyers, Barranco, Decatur, or General GMC Atlanta. We leave you tonight with a special look at some of the top events of 1988, the year we elected a new president, the year of the Olympics, the year another American space shuttle blasted successfully into orbit. It was a year full of events and tragedies that affected so many lives, perhaps even the world. Our special photo essay is produced and edited by 11 Alive photographer Bill Jones. Good night. My message to you tonight is put on your work shoes. We're still on the job. Congress shouldn't send another one of these. And if you do, I will not sign it. Перед нами стоят две взаимосвязанные задачи. There is a lot of misunderstanding of the role of courts in this country. Don't help me guys. to the NBA the type of play that you don't normally see. He has touched more individuals who came through Georgia Tech than any other one person. I now leave the profession after 25 years of service to the University of Georgia. The final decision was an hour ago deciding to uh, remain at North Carolina State. But I'm gonna try! The weird part I get. Eleven Alive News Scribe. Closed captioning for the hearing impaired. Made possible by Bank South. That's what I like about the South.